Hey folks, welcome to another Water Trek 360. Today I'm going to do a mini public service announcement about lithium batteries and safety concerns. I've done a lot of reviews lately on dive lights and you may have noticed my continual reference to whether a battery is protected or unprotected. Let's talk about why. There are many reports on lithium batteries and safety issues from dive boat and yacht disasters to large shipping vessels being lost at sea. Lithium batteries have been a godsend for the dive light manufacturers, enabling more powerful and lightweight lights. Remember these days? 10 pounds of light dragging around on your hip <laughs> or arm? Yeah, thank God. There are many types of lithium ion batteries. Follow their specific specs and details on how to use and charge them. As always, I am not paid by nor represent any product or manufacturer that I may reference in this video. These opinions are my own. Let's first look at how lithium batteries work. These batteries are made up of an anode, a cathode, a separator, electrolytes, and two positive and negative current collectors. The anode and cathode store the lithium. The electrolyte carries positively charged lithium ions from the anode to the cathode and vice versa through the separator. The movement of the lithium ions creates free electrons in the anode, which creates a charge at the positive current collector. The electrical current then flows from the current collector through the device being powered, in this case a dive light, to the negative current collector. The separator blocks the flow of electrons inside the battery. Charging basically works the same way, but in reverse. So what happens when a lithium battery catches on fire? The liquid electrolyte within the battery begins to decompose, creating what's called a thermal runaway. This starts fires, creating a toxic gas. This is usually gets progressively more intense. Although it may look like the fire is receding, usually the fire will continue to intensify and lead to an explosion. What causes lithium batteries to catch fire or explode in the first place? Usually it's due to some sort of abuse of the battery, mechanical or physical abuse, where something penetrates, crushes, bends the battery, leading to an internal short circuit. Electrical abuse due to overcharging and over discharging can create these metallic dendrites also leading to an internal short circuit. And there's thermal abuse, extreme heat, leading the separator to collapse. This can happen, as, as I said, you leave them in the car for a day in the hot sun or storing them in a place of high temperature. Older and aged batteries are more prone to these types of abuse and need to be monitored much more carefully. So what are some common sense ways to safely use lithium batteries and prevent issues? Don't physically abuse the battery. <laughs> Don't store them loose, especially with metallic objects. Don't throw, drop, or treat them roughly. When a battery vibrates violently or falls, the internal pole piece of the battery can be misplaced and short circuit. If it is cut, bent, or damaged, dispose of it immediately and properly. If the lithium battery is pierced by any hard object, the lithium ions inside will directly react chemically with the oxygen in the air and burn violently. Avoid high temperature and fire roasting. High temperature or fire roasting can cause, obviously, combustion and explosion. As can, as I said, long-term exposure to the sun or an ambient working temperature that's too high, higher than normal tolerances of the battery. 
which is generally 40 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid overcharging. Overcharge explosions can happen. When the charging voltage is greater than 5 volts, the protection circuit in the battery or the detection cabinet go out of control. The electrolyte, again, will decompose and violent reactions occur inside the battery. The increased internal pressure is not good. Turn the device off or disconnect the load on the charge. Allow the current to drop unhindered. Leave it alone. Also, a parasitic load on a charger will confuse the charger. Charge at a moderate temperature and a moderate rate. Do not charge at or below freezing. Lithium ions do not need to be fully charged. A partial charge sometimes is better. Not all chargers actually apply a full topping charge, and the battery may not be fully charged, even though the ready signal appears and the 100% charge on the fuel gauge is false. Get yourself a good charge, a good smart charge. One that has the appropriate size for your specific battery. Don't charge it on soft or combustible material. Do not daisy chain your charger on underrated extension cords. This creates a strain on the charger, let alone on the outlet. On a liveaboard, I always wait until a plug frees up. Always choose an extension cord that is at least rated for the same total amps or watts for the device being charged, meaning the battery. Monitor your charging process. Most dive boat liveaboards require monitored charging. Avoid over discharging. Generally speaking, over discharge will increase the internal pressure of the battery again, destroy the reversibility of the positive and negative active materials, Decompose the electrolyte again and deposit the negative ion in a way that it increases the resistance. Look at the battery's info on available discharge and rate of discharge and follow those. Store them properly. Avoid storing batteries for a long time at full charge and apply some charge to an empty battery before storing. Roughly 40 to 50 percent of SOC is ideal. Batteries should be stored in a well-ventilated dry area, kept, again, between 40 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. They should be stored away from direct sunlight, heat sources, and water. Batteries should be stacked so that they are stable, preferably vertical, so they won't be bumped, knocked over, or otherwise damaged. Again, preferably in a hard case. Better yet, a fire retarded case. Same when you travel. FAA and airlines have strict rules about what kinds of battery and how many lithium batteries are allowed in check as well as carry on. Check with the airlines for their specific rules before you fly. To be safe, apply the same rules. No loose batteries. Avoid issues with security scans. Put them in a case and protect them from getting bumped or banged. Properly dispose of old, aged batteries. There are several ways you can tell when a battery is aging out. One, charging time is longer than usual. It doesn't last as long as it used to. The charging process causes overheating of the device or the battery. Or it gets excessively warm for a long period of time. The device can't charge at all. The device powers off unexpectedly. The battery indicator on the device is inaccurate, slow response with any device that you're using, and low voltage being registered out of a voltage meter. With any of these, discontinue charging and use of the battery. Dispose of the battery properly. When you do dispose of these, follow your city ordinance and waste facility procedures. Do not throw them in the garbage. One. It's illegal. It can cause a fire or explosion due to the violent nature of the garbage collection process. When you do dispose of them, try and fully discharge them first if you are able. The 
this brings us back to protected versus unprotected batteries. Protected batteries are deemed safer because they have internal circuitry to disable it if the battery pressure inside gets too high. Unprotected batteries lack this circuitry and hence usually cheaper but more prone to issues. Many of the best cells out there are actually unprotected. If you choose to use these, take extra care and get good ones. How do you know if your batteries are protected? Well, pretty easy. Regardless if it's a button top or flat top, typically the easiest way is that unprotected batteries have a smooth body, whereas protected batteries have a rim where the added circuitry is located. The rim makes the battery a little longer. Unprotected 18650s are 65 millimeters long, and the protected batteries are generally 67 millimeters or longer. Button tops can be even longer at uh, 68 to 69. But again, the protected versions will have that extra 2 to 3 millimeters of length. With 21700, flat tops are generally 70 millimeters and protected batteries 74, 78 or greater. Being risk averse, I generally try to get good protected batteries wherever I can. However, make sure your device can fit the larger protected battery and handle any changes in drain amperage. I know some folks may think this is overkill, but batteries are the most important piece other than the light itself, contributing to the overall experience and safety when using the light. Stay safe, get the right batteries, get good ones from a reputable source, and don't abuse them. Well, I hope you found this little PSA useful. If so, click subscribe, drop me a note in the comments. Anyway, my friends, I hope you are having as much fun as I am. Stay safe in your next adventures. And as always, until you see me the next time, go explore, get wet. <laughs>